Hello everybody, welcome back to Sapphire's Soup Du Jour, stirring the pot and serving the latest soup. Used to be each and every week, but lately it's been a little bit less than that. I've got a couple things stirring in the pot here. Uh, new things I've got, I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. So I've done a couple of different things since I've been gone. It's been rainy out, so you know, I haven't been able to go out and do the things that I wanted to do. And I don't want to lead too far into it because i got something to announce in a little bit. However, today I want to discuss the newest current events, which are obviously politically driven because we've got an election coming up in 18 months. Yes, we do. I got a special announcement, as I said. And I also want to discuss the social media. I've talked about it a couple of times before, and I want to talk about it again. We're not doing too well with it, ladies and gentlemen. We're acting like kindergartners, and that's what I want to address. But anyways, first and foremost, let's welcome back Stevie Iserman. He is a general manager now of the Detroit Red Wings. If you don't know who Stevie Iserman is, you must not be from here because he is a legend in the hockey world. If you're into sports, if you're not into sports, you've still heard his name. He's kind of a Detroit household name. Anyway, welcome back, Stevie Eisenman. Let's hope you can bring the wings back to prominence like they were before. All right, so after this, okay, so let's just get right to it. Now, we're going to talk about politics. First and foremost, we've got Democrats who have many, many names in the hat for the coming election in 18 months in November of 2020. And it seems with all the uprising and everything going on in this country with Donald Trump and the Republicans against the Democrats and everything, not only have we lost touch of what America is about, we've got one person that will be discussed as a Republican nominee for the party, and that is Trump. Play the devil's advocate here for a minute, okay? You got Trump, who is apparently the best thing representing the Republicans, and it's not, it's that I it's up to debate, but it's not up to debate because that's not the issue, whether or not Trump is is qualified or not. The the issue is Trump's the only one being talked about in in the national media for the Republican Party yet. Now, there's many, many nominees putting their name in the hat for the Democratic Party. That makes it confusing for a lot of people. And let's face it, the political climate in this country is starting to become more focused. But it's going to also lead into my other subject about social media and what we're doing with that. Because we're not doing the right things, in my opinion, with social media. What we need to be doing is focusing on solutions, not problems. We know the problems we've got. Let's take, for instance, this wall we're talking about. The wall, this thing we're talking about building, the issue is illegal immigration. The issue is drug and sex, human trafficking, sex humans and whatever, slavery, whatever they're doing. That is the criminal issue. I know that the political issue is, what about the families running from persecution? Our government is supposed to already handle those cases on a case-by-case -case basis. If you are truly in imminent danger of your life from your government, the United States has a moral responsibility to address that issue. If you're just trying to get over here, you've got to go through legal immigration. That's the way it is. My opinion, that's the way it is. Now, oh, I just did a Trump little hand thing. Okay, good Lord. That doesn't mean I'm voting for him, everybody. I honestly don't know who I'm voting for because I haven't found a single person to vote for that is worthy of my vote yet. I think I've explained it before what would happen if I became president. I'm fully not qualified. I completely don't know how to become a multimillionaire or a billionaire. So that doesn't put me in the running. I don't use prescription drugs only because I have to. They don't like that because the prescription drugs and insurance companies run this country. That's my opinion. Okay, so let's see. Back to the topic. The election's coming up in 18 months. Who are you voting for? You voting for Trump? I salute you. You voting for a Democrat? I salute you. I don't care who you vote for. It's America. I'm not a 12-year-old. I understand people that say I'm not going to be friends with you because you don't agree with my political view. I don't, I don't down that. That's fine. I respect that. But guess what? I don't care who you vote for. If you want to vote, vote. If you don't want to vote, don't vote. If you don't vote and want to complain, complain all you want. You're an American citizen. You have that right. That's our freedom. 
We are constricting and restricting our freedoms on our own by all this cancel culture crap we've got going on. Now, this is off the script completely, but it's part of my problem I've got right now. The N-word. Let's talk about the N-word. I like Comedy Central. It's a television channel. They got a brand new show out called The New Nose. I'm beeping that word out because I don't like it. It's insensitive. It's insightful. It's hateful. It's hurtful. If we're going to be equal, then everybody can say everything. I don't want you to call me no cracker, and I'm not going to call you a bad word either. I don't like it. That is not a way to represent your television show, to say that word. I don't care. It don't even bother me. It doesn't bother me in the least. But it bothers a lot of people. I'm not going to be the stupid one to sit there and be insensitive to a whole group of people, whether they're right or wrong. It's a bad choice, my opinion. Anyway, that was off the, off the script. But that show, y'all need to reconsider that. I love South Park. I love Comedy Central. I love freedom of speech and being able to say what you want. I'm talking to society, not legal. I don't care if it's legal to say. You say it, you're asking for trouble. If I can't go out in the middle of a bar and scream it, then I shouldn't be saying it, period. And the discussion in my book, I don't care if you want to argue about it, that's fine, we can discuss it. That's just my opinion. The word is hurtful. Kwame, that's the only thing Kwame did good besides graduating from college and becoming the mayor of a city was he killed the N-word, but it's back. Like a bad Michelob commercial, it's back. Does that make your skin crawl or your brain freak out? Whatever. All right, so anyways, I'm all fired up now. All right, you're listening to Sapphire Soup Du Jour. I'll be right back. Welcome to Adam's Apple, your neighborhood LGBT bar serving all your favorite drink with friendly and knowledgeable bartenders that keep the party going and make sure your needs are met. It's, it's cheers of your bartenders know who's coming in, where they're going to sit, how long they're going to be. Kick back and enjoy some fresh air on their large enclosed heated patio. Open year round with music and weekly barbecues karaoke every Thursday night where you're the star and Mexican Fiesta on the last Monday of every month. All right, I'm back, everybody. Uh -huh, you're listening to Sapphire Soup Du Jour. All right, we just had a little political discussion there and I just went off topic a little bit, but that's okay. We talked about the upcoming election in 2020. Now I want to share with you another story that I've got. This story, it's funny as heck, okay? A prominent Miami plastic surgeon known as the boob god, yeah, the boob god, sues unhappy patients for saggy and flabby reviews online. Mm -hmm. I did it. I know. I said it. Yes. He is suing unhappy patients. What happened is there's two women. Well, they've fallen into a booby trap. They're being sued for leaving bad reviews online and I read them nothing too bad I'm not going to mention their names because you can find out if you want to it's right online Dr. Leonard Hochstein okay he has filed lawsuits against two former patients one of them her breasts were different sizes allegedly and she was obviously not happy with that now I will say this and I'm not defending anybody on this show and I'm not promoting anybody on this show most women's breasts are different sizes, aren't they? I don't know. Mine are not, but I bought mine, so. All right, so the first lady's suing because her breasts are different sizes. The second lady is, or no, 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 I'm sorry, let me correct that. He's suing her, the doctor is suing her because she says that her breasts are different sizes on the review, and it's a bad review. The second one is suing because her breasts were too large, not the size that she had wanted. Now, whether that's the size they spoke about or not, I don't know. But silicone comes by the ounce. I'm sure it's expensive for the bigger ones. But she's also got bad scarring from it. I guess they're way too big. I've not looked at the pictures or anything. Okay, so in his defense, and this is a quote, he says, and I quote, My reputation is the most important thing to me. My patients come to me strictly through word of mouth. You want to defend yourself against things that you know did not happen. 
end quote. Yeah. And he also sued another patient of June of 2018. All right, I'll keep you posted on this crazy story. They're going to go tit for tat in court, and we'll let you know what comes out of this. You have the right to complain if, if you were not happy. Did they sue for malpractice? That would be the legality of it. Maybe there's a different story there. But I can say this. You can give a bad review online. That's just the way it is. If they don't claim anything, claim anything that's slanderous or libel or anything like that, you can say what you want. I think that those women are going to win the lawsuit if it goes to court. Maybe he can't be looking for money because he's got to have money. It'd be different if they were suing him for something. Then I would think maybe they were just out for the money to cover the cost of their implants or whatever they had done. Reconstructive surgery, both of these seem to be for uh, cosmetic reasons, but who knows why? And it doesn't matter. And I also know someone personally that I grew up with. I won't mention any names or anything like that. Beautiful girl. My dogs are up there barking. That's wonderful. You're welcome for that. Like Once again, we are in a home studio here in my basement, so somebody's walking by with a dog, and my dogs are losing their stuff. But I have a dear friend of mine who I grew up with in childhood who had implants in, the, in her youth, and she is now recovering from health issues from them. She's had them removed, and she is living a healthy life again. And she's my age. I won't say her age, but I'm 50. And I do that like that. See, it's called throwing shade. I have an umbrella over there, but I don't need it. So anyways, and thankfully she's doing well and healthy and back to normal. That's not to say everybody has that problem because I'm sure 99 out of 100 women probably don't have any issues. I don't know that figure to be accurate or not, so I shouldn't have said it. But I hesitate to say something like that. But most women that I know have breast implants don't have any issues, at least publicly. And that's another thing. Not everybody shares everything on Facebook, which is going to lead us into the next thing I want to talk about. When we come back, I'm going to talk to you guys about social media. We'll be right back. Thank you for watching Sapphire's Soup Du Jour. Stir the pot and serve the lead soup with just a pinch of spice. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. Welcome back to Sapphire Soup Du Show. You know how we're doing it now. We're going to talk smack. and We're going to talk about issues that are important since nobody's contacted me about issues they want to talk about. I've been gone for about a month or so, so I can understand. I'm going to talk about what I want and what I think is going to incite good conversation and help us start. Because I'm trying to make this show about current events. America right now, current events are all political. All right, and we did discuss the upcoming election. We welcome back our Detroit hero, Stevie Y, and I shared a story about a bunch of boobs fighting over boobs. And that's just crazy to me. You would think it would be that they were doing that because of a health issue and the patients are suing the doctor. But in today's world, the doctor is now suing them and plugging up our court system for some bull crap. Now we're going to talk about social media. Facebook, Instagram, and the effects on individuals and society. Because there's a different effect on both, but, it, well, it's a similar effect in my opinion. But the one biggest thing that I'm seeing on social media is obviously the lack of accountability because you can't say something to someone's mouth if you're going to get knocked in the puss for it. Name calling. This thing about, okay, so let's go back. To win Donald Trump, and this is still political because we're talking about social media. We're talking about the effects it's having on you acting crazy. Okay. You didn't like the fact that he made fun of somebody who had a physical handicap. We don't like him making fun of heavier women. We don't like him making fun of people considered not attractive. We don't like him making fun of older people, even though he is considered older. But yeah, we're doing the same thing. Mom and dad should have taught you better than that. Do unto others. That is in the Bible, but it's also a good thing to go by, even if it's not religious. Don't you think that you should probably do what, like, seriously, do what you want done to you? I mean, it's. I'm not trying to sound like a disciple or anything, but Think about it. I mean, we're sitting here on Facebook and I see it every day. 
I see it with people, and it really makes me question whether I want you voting or not. Making fun of people because, like, what's the lady that does the? She's the the press secretary, Sam, Sam, whatever her name is. People make fun of her all the time. That's somebody's daughter. I know you don't like her, but that doesn't mean you make fun of them. You don't like that they're making fun of others. Well, she's not necessarily, but who she stands for. One of the things you don't like about Donald Trump is he makes fun of people, and then you make fun of him. That's that's childish, and that makes their point the same as your point, and your point the same as their point. Social media. Now, Instagram, talking about hiding how many likes because of the pressure being put on us to do social media. And my post has to like stuff. I'm in the entertainment business, everybody. I want my likes. I want all that. To, I want not. Let me rephrase that. I want people to like what I'm putting out there. But just because someone sees it and doesn't click like doesn't mean that the message is not sent. Keep that in mind. I don't need a million likes. I don't need a million friends. I need to put my message out there properly so people see it. A lot of times my messages are going to be sent where people aren't going to want to like it. And hopefully they don't like it. And I got some things coming up here in a couple months. I need to establish a couple things first. But once I do, we're going to start having some serious discussions about Detroit and the LGBT community and what we can do to change and fix things. Because, you know, in 2012, and we're going off script again, but it's okay because it's what we do here. It's called soup du jour for a reason. We talk about anything. I always talked about I want to be the change that we all speak of. And I tried. I'm still going to do it, but I've taken a little back seat to that community. A lot of respect for the community. Not a lot of respect for what's going on in the entertainment world in the Detroit area. And we're going to get into that eventually. This is going to turn in now to a little bit of a lead into that because I'll have to be doing that episode here pretty soon now that I've opened my big mouth about it. It's not meant to be derogatory toward anybody or anything, and I've already spoken to everybody in the community about the way I feel about stuff. And I have a lot of respect for everybody for doing it their way, the way they want, even though I think they're going about it the wrong way for 2019. And more to come on that one. So anyways, everybody, back to the thing about social media. Now, here I went and did it. I did the same thing that I've been talking about for the last five minutes. Going on here and talking about something and not having a reason to talk about it. That's what I wanted to say next. When we talk about something, we need to be able to give a solution. Now, I have a couple solutions for what I just spoke about, and I'm going to share them with you in the next couple of weeks. And they're, they're nothing, they're, there ain't no surprises in this, honey. I've said it publicly to everybody that has been in the bars with me, respectfully, even to the people that I say are part of the quote-unquote problem, even though it's more of an issue than a problem, because it's only a problem if everybody complains about it. But that's another thing. People on social media complain about things, but then when they get in face-to-face -face issues and circumstances where you're standing there, now your buddy buddy having a drink and a cocktail again and sharing the latest story about your mom and your brother and your sisters when in reality, that isn't the way you feel. But that's how we do it today's world. Social media has become a breeding ground of hatred. And first of all, quit posting the bull crap. I saw a very, very prominent LGBT trans specifically advocate a trans lady herself, very prominent, posting something from Onion.com the other day. That is a satire. That is a, they make stuff up. That individual, lover, posted something all mad, inciting hateful feelings when it was BS. So you got to be careful. Social media, you don't have to be responsible. Go back and listen to my other video casts about it. You don't have to be responsible. You can say what you want. You can share what you want. But think about it. If you're trying to make change, which is what I'm just talking, babbling about a minute ago about me wanting to make change, you got to state facts. Do some investigating. You're in charge of people. People look up to your posts. And if you post something like that, guess what? Most people don't take the time to educate themselves to read it. But I do. I'm 50 years old. I'm I got nothing else to do. 
but to investigate what the heck I'm saying now. And I have a responsibility now when I'm doing this on video and stuff to make sure that my facts are in a row and that my opinions are stated as such because my opinions do not support the facts all the time because sometimes the facts are the facts and I don't agree with them, just like you and everybody has that right. So anyway, okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching another episode of Sapphire's Soup Du Jour. Hope you had a good time and I will be talking with you all real soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.